This is going to be a tutorial on how to design deep cut puzzles using shell neck in SOLIDWORKS. We're going to use the Master Pen Ultimate as an example because it's a really good place to start. Relative to other shell neck puzzles, it's pretty simple and this is not as hard as it might seem and I'm going to lay it out in the easiest way I can. Before we start, make sure you can already design a Megaminx or just even if it's not a mega mix, if you can design a 3x3, then you can probably learn shell neck. I'm just going to show you how to split the pieces, and then you can figure out the tolerance, the fillet, and the finishing to whatever, whatever steps you, you normally take to prototype your puzzles. I'm not going to go over the theory of shell neck. I'm ho hopefully you have some idea of how it works, how a mega mix maps to a pyramix crystal, how a pyramix crystal maps to a master pentultimate. So, so if you don't have any context on that, um, I would suggest to learn about it a little bit. If anyone has any good resources, please comment below. And step one is to open your dodecahedron. I reuse a previously designed dodecahedron for all of my dodecahedron puzzles. It just simplifies things. My dodecahedron is 100 millimeters, so first I scale it. We can make it um, 50 millimeter edge length for for this. That's probably about what you'd want if you were going to actually prototype this. Go to the plane that I plan on designing my cross section. Go to section view. Start a sketch on this plane. Draw six concentric circles. Now that you have six circles, you want to go to the bottom here and connect them all with vertical lines. We want to make these all construction lines. You want to make all of the vertical lines equal you want to dimension these lines. I like to use three millimeters for my shell thickness. Move the circles so that there are two circles on the inside and then one tangent. I'm going to name this circles. These are going to be reference circles and they're going to help us a lot with designing shells later so that we don't need to measure out thicknesses and everything. And another advantage of circles is it enables something I call the squish method. Well, I'll get into that later, but it's pretty simple. Step one is we want to design a megaminx. I'm going to do that on this plane. Let's first make a, an axis line. So this line is going to be the turning axis of the megaminx. Uh, and next we're going to use the very bottom circle as our arc line. So that's going to come out to around here. And now that you have the arc line, you want to connect it to this next circle. And now it's really important that all of these lines coincide the origin. So to do that, you click on this line, you click on the origin, and you click Make Coincident. So now it coincides the origin, and you can see it always points towards the origin. This is going to help us a lot. It's going to help eliminate a lot of problems. Draw a short arc here finally draw the cut line and again this needs to coincide the origin and this is going to create curvy megamix cuts but one of the advantages of doing it like this is you're always going to have pieces you're never going to have weird isolated shards when things coincide the origin this is the cross section of our megamix so we're going to save this cross section i'm going to name this cross section split this dodecahedron into a megamix. split our megamix. You can just click on the scissors here. Let's isolate one of each piece to see how they look. One thing we're aiming for in this process is balanced proportions of each piece. So you don't want any surface that's too thin, anything that's too thick. You, you want everything to be as balanced 
fast as possible. So one thing I'm seeing here is this is a very wide edge. It's a very thin corner. So what we can do is is, is make them more balanced in nature. So let's go back to our cross section and account for this. So to do that, we want to slide this down and slide this down. Let's save this. So now you can see the proportions is more even. So let's take a look at just three pieces again. Um, I'm looking at the center and I see there's definitely enough room for a screw here. Uh, this edge is a little bit thin, but it's not going to cause any issues. And everything else is relatively balanced. And I'm happy with this Megaminx. I would be okay putting this Megaminx as the core of this puzzle. Next, we can expand this into a Pyraminx crystal. In order to, to convert this into a Pyraminx crystal, we need to add lines for it in the cross section. And it's going to cause a lot, create a lot of new parts. So I, I'm going to just roll back the split feature and then we can roll it forward later once we update our cross section. Let's go edit the cross section. Once, once I go from one layer to the next, like Megamix to Pyramix Crystal, what I do is, since I'm happy with the proportions, what I'll do is I'll fix the, the lines that coincide the origin. Yeah, the advantage of, of fixing these is it locks in the, the proportions of the geometry. So all, all of the proportions that we liked earlier in the Megamix are now set for eternity. The next step is um, what I call squishing. W what it is, is it's a way of taking this mech and you push it closer to, to this origin. And what that does is it's going to create more room for the Pyramix crystal pieces. For, for the next shell, it's going to create more room. So to do that, I'm going to squish down two shells. So one, two. Just for the proof concept here, let's save this sketch. We split it. You can see the external looks the same. And the, the Megaminx has preserved itself because all the lines are con coinci coinciding to the origin, and it's just thicker. So now there's all this extra room to split up this dodecahedron. Okay, now that we're in the cross section again, what we want to do is bring this line and have it connect to our next shell. And next, we want to just expand the shell out. So we go here, we go all the way down, draw another line. Again, make sure this coincides the origin. And draw another line. So if you take a look, look at this cross section, it looks very similar to our initial Mega Minx. And normally this line here, say this were a Megaminx, would go all the way to this, um, to the turning axis. You can see that's what this line does. They're kind of similar lines. But since we don't want it to completely separate the Pyraminx crystal layer from the Megaminx layer, we just have to go up into the Megaminx split. So it's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, another thing with the Pyraminx crystal is this cut here. This line, um, even though it, it definitely needs to coincide the origin, like for for our purposes, it also needs to be perpendicular to this face, and that's just a a, a property of Pyraminx crystals. It doesn't it's not really a specific thing for shell mech, but for Pyraminx crystals, if, if this is perpendicular to this line, it'll It'll, all of the lines will meet at the center point, and you'll see that in a minute. Let's save this. Let's undo our section view. And now I'm going to rebuild the split. So I rebuilt the split, and you can see there's some parts missing. This is because initially when we selected the bodies in the split feature, SolidWorks is trying to now, now that we're rebuilding it, it's trying to map the previous bodies to the current ones. and since there are more bodies, it can't do it. So it's not a big deal. It's pretty normal. You just go back into the split feature and select the new bodies. To do that, all you need to do is click on the scissors again and check. Now let's isolate some, some bodies to see how
how we like the new proportions of the Paramix crystal. Pegamix looks okay to me. The Pegamix crystal also looks okay to me. You can see it's got a nice wide foot here, and that looks good. The center still looks good, and this corner here, uh, nothing. There's no alarmingly thin faces, so I'm happy with this Pyramix crystal. Uh, sometimes I would go back and edit the cross section, but in this case, I actually like it. One thing to note about a Pyramix crystal is you can see these bodies kind of just floating around here. Let me isolate them. Just because of the geometry of the Pyramix crystal, it creates these floating bodies here. They're just little shards that don't do anything. And this is actually a pretty common thing that you see in shell mech. There's just weird intersections of parts, and it creates these weird shards. And you can just delete them. It's going to create little gaps in the mechanism, but it's pretty much okay for the most part, as long as you're not deleting anything super major or huge. Uh, they don't get in the way, the gaps don't do anything, and if you look at all of the existing pieces, they all hold in pretty well. So, uh, yeah, don't worry about them, just delete them. Next, we want to pretty much do what we just did, translating the Mega Minx into the Pyramix Crystal, but again into the Master Penultimate. And if you think this is enough at this point in this tutorial, like feel free to stop watching and just try and design the Master Penultimate from here, because what I'm about to show you is pretty much exactly what we just did, but just repeated to a deeper layer. Um, but I'll show you it anyway. So step one is undo your split, then edit your cross section, and we want to lock in the proportions we have. So make this fixed, and then squish in. Bring this all the way down to the one shell above it. Draw our arc, have it go all the way down here. Have it come up. Make sure this. So SolidWorks made this is something to be to watch out for. SolidWorks made this line horizontal. Sometimes it tries to lock in proportions for us. Um, we don't want to do that. We want to make it coincide the origin. So I'm just going to manually select that. Um, since I didn't do section view, you can actually kind of like see this corner. So we just want to make sure our our final line doesn't go above that. So one last line here, and then since this is the actual final cut that will be visible, uh, we want to make it parallel to this face so that it's not curvy. Because if we made this line coincide the origin, then that cut would be curvy on the final thing. So I'm just going to not do that. Let's save this. Here's our master pendulumment from the outside, and I'm happy with the visual proportions of this. The edges are about the same size as the corners, so to me this looks good. Uh, I like it, and the final thing to do is to check to make sure that we actually like the proportions of the pieces, so I'm going to isolate a few. So here's one of each piece, and I'm looking at it, and it looks mostly good to me. Uh, from what I see, I would say this would be printable, and for FDM, I think the proportions are probably valid. The only thing that bugs me a little bit is uh, this tooth here is, is not really going in far enough. So this piece is definitely at risk of falling out or popping. So actually want to go back into my cross section and make a little tweak that should help with this. And all that is is to make this line a little bit longer. You don't want to overdo it because it'll eat into some other pieces. And I can see this piece has a little bit more thickness to it, which should hold it in better. And you can play around with it more. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the proportions of all these pieces. I think this would come out decently well. Um, yeah, the, the only thing I want to point out is this is kind of an oversimplified version of shell mech, and the reason I wanted to teach it this way to start out was to make it easier to learn, because it can be a bit confusing at first, but 
Uh, yeah, the, the one thing I would say is like, <clears throat> the one thing I really don't like is this Mega Mix Edge here. Uh, the, there's nothing other than the core keeping this piece from just falling inwards. This tooth here keeps it from falling outwards, which is great, but uh, just to maintain turning stability, I think it would be better if this piece was more like jagged. So if I was actually prototyping this, I would change it a little bit. I can go more into detail on other tutorials, but for the most part, I wanted to just make a tutorial for those who were stuck on shell neck who needed some help um, with the process of actually splitting the pieces. Because that is the hardest part, is splitting the pieces. And uh, another thing to note is you can you can design the whole cross section at once. Like this is the whole puzzle, just this cross section. Um, but but you don't you can do it all at once. But I even even someone who designs a lot, I, I wouldn't suggest doing this. One of the the huge advantages to designing one shell at a time is you have a lot more control over the proportions and you're not like overwhelming yourself with too much information at once. And I, I like the incremental nature to it. Uh, the one downside is that the, the builds can take a while, especially if you're doing really huge puzzles like icosahedrons or puzzles with a lot more pieces than, than a master pent pentultimate. It can get time consuming. However, there, there are ways to cut down on build time, like doing multiple splits rather than just one huge split of everything. So, <coughs> So all in all, um, hopefully you, and this is a good enough starting point. I think any designer who sort of has any idea what they're doing can, can probably take, run with this information and design anything. But designing shell neck is, is huge for a puzzle designer. Once you, once you figure it out, the, the number of puzzles you can design goes up dramatically there's there's so many more there's so many more puzzles you you can design in shell neck once you know it uh, you're very 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 limited in what you can design if you don't know shell neck so once you know this it's like opens the whole realm of possibilities um, yeah uh, hopefully I'll make more tutorials in the future I felt like this was the one that was the most needed and uh, yeah Thank you. Smash all my buttons for the YouTube algorithm. And thank you for watching.